Good morning and welcome to worship here at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I am the pastor here. And we are very glad you are here with us in worship. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life, and I'm glad that you're here with us today as well. And I'm David Evans, I'm the interpreter today. All right, we uh, continue to worship together, although we are all um, separated in our own homes. And now that um, the numbers of coronavirus are going up again, um, we know that we will need to continue to stay separate to keep one another safe. And even as we do that, we are amazed that God can gather us together, even in the midst of the pandemic. So we join together in worship, and today we join together in communion. So I um, invite you to gather your bread and your wine or your juice so that you have that ready um, for a little bit later in worship. And with that, we invite you into worship now. In the beginning and now and forever, God, you are the maker. You are the child among us and you are the spirit breathing life into us. Dancing together, working together, belonging to each other. In the beginning and now and forever, God created the earth and its inhabitants, the plants, the animals, and the people. Dancing together, working together, belonging to each other. We are connected because God is kind and good. From the beginning until now, and it will be forever that we are all united in God's creation. We dance with the trees of the field and the stars in the heavens. We stand with the mountains and we are steady like the seas. We worship you, God, in the beginning, now, and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Prayer for the day. God, you reign in heaven and earth. You cleansed Isaiah with a coal of fire. You prepared Isaiah to proclaim your word to the world. Prepare us to 
Help us to know your direction for us. Encourage us to fulfill our callings eagerly and with passion. Show the world your greatness. You cannot be contained. Just as smoke cannot be contained. You cannot be contained just as fire cannot be captured. Jesus Christ sanctifies us and sacrificed everything to carry out your commandments. Amen. Today's Bible lesson is from Isaiah. We'll be reading in chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. This is the story of Isaiah the prophet. And in this story, we learn what Isaiah sees when he's in the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah says, I had a vision of the Lord. He was on his throne, high above, and his robe filled the temple. Flaming creatures with six wings each were flying over him. They covered their faces with two of their wings and their bodies with two more. They used the other two wings for flying. As they shouted, holy, holy, holy Lord, all powerful, the earth is filled with your glory. As they shouted, the doorposts of the temple shook and the temple was filled with smoke. And then I cried out, I'm doomed. Everything I say is sinful. And so were the words of everyone around me. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord, all-powerful. One of the flaming creatures flew over to me with a burning coal that it had taken from the altar with a pair of metal tongs. It touched my lips with the hot coal and said, this has touched your lips, your sins are forgiven. You are no longer guilty. After this, I heard the Lord ask, is there anyone I can send? Will someone go for us? And I answered, I'll go, Lord, send me. My friends and family in Christ, it is my prayer that you will stay close to God. Uh, just a couple words before I start my sermon today um, about sort of the arc of our um, story in the narrative lectionary. So here at Bread of Life, we follow a set of readings that sort of tries to help us understand the big story of God. And so we start in the Old Testament 
And in September, we started with the creation story. And then we talked about how sin um, affects the world. And we talked about these big stories of God. And a couple of weeks ago, we sort of shifted away from those really big stories of what God is doing to stories about prophets. And what prophets do is they help us remember these big stories that we studied and what God does, right? Those big stories show us that God decides to be with us, to stay with us. That's what God promises to do. And God asks us to stay with God. But often, we people fail. We often aren't able to maintain our side of the promise. We fail to stay with God, but God continues to stay with us. So even if we don't notice it, even if we sort of ignore that God is near to us, God is still near to us. And so the stories of prophets kind of point out how we fail. And so it's kind of important. I've forgotten to set that up a couple of weeks ago. It was All Saints Sunday. So we didn't, I didn't want to take a bunch of time explaining that. And then um, Lori preached last week. And so just to want to set that up that we've sort of stepped away from stories about what God is doing and mm -hmm. stepped towards stories about what prophets do and how they remind us of God's promise to always be with us. And sometimes prophets are kind of irritating and um, sort of intimidating, right? Because their job really is to remind us of who God is and how we fail to live up to our part of life with God. And so as we are people of faith and people who are called to do hard things sometimes, we have to root ourselves in God. We need to spend time with God in prayer or meditating on who God is, thinking about God, the characteristics of God, or rooting ourselves through Bible study and discussion in community. Because God often calls us to do hard things, we need to reach out to God for power, to reach out to God for love, reach out to God for energy to keep going. How do we do this? Similar, right? We need to spend time in prayer. We need to meditate on who God is and studying God's word. Because God will accomplish the justice and the peace 
that is God's. It will happen in the world. God's vision for what the world can be, that will become reality. And we are invited to share that vision, to share that message. We are invited in as messengers. But the success of God's ways, that success depends on God, not on us. So that's where we're going today. I'm going to repeat that set of kind of contemplation um, things about rooting ourselves in God. I'm going to repeat that several times because it's really important. And as Lutherans, we often do a lot of thinking. We use our brains. Sometimes we forget our heart. And we forget about our bodies. So we have to be reminded. And, and <clears throat> this vision today from Isaiah, that reminds us that we're not alone. And then the power to, to change the world, it doesn't come from us. The power and the love to to change the world, to make the world better, it comes from God. <clears throat> so as I said, often I think prophets can be kind of irritating and intimidating, right? Because their job is to remind us of who God is. And they point out all these different ways that we people fail to live up to the call that God has for us and to have, like to live into the fullness of life and joy that God invites us into. Prophets compare what we do to what we could do when we really trust the promise and hope that God loves us. I think with Isaiah, we, um, I feel at least, I always feel amazed that after this vision and this encounter with God, Isaiah volunteers in this vision, Isaiah realizes his guilt and his sin, and he realizes the guilt and the sin of his community. And he volunteers. After the angel seraphim thing brings that burning hot coal over to Isaiah's mouth and burns his lips, He volunteers to go for God. And so when we receive this story that describes that Isaiah says, yes, yes to God, I think it can be kind of shocking that Isaiah says yes. Because I, I, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody having this kind of experience of God calling them. 
But Isaiah recognizes that this is God calling him. God is inviting Isaiah into a call, into a particular thing. And even though Isaiah feels unprepared and as if he has missed living up to God's standards, and even though the whole community around Isaiah is making mistakes and turning away from God, Isaiah recognizes that God is still inviting him into relationship with God. That God is still calling Isaiah to go out. And this call to Isaiah comes because of God's power and because God loves the world. And I imagine all of you are saying, well, what is God calling Isaiah to do? What is it that God is asking Isaiah to do? Because we didn't read that part. Well, God gives Isaiah a very hard message to share with the world. In essence, God asks Isaiah to go um, about his days and his nights, pointing out all of the ways the people do not depend on God. To point out all of the other things that we depend on. Like we depend on ourselves. I can do it myself. I'll just take care of it myself. We depend on our families. Uh, we depend on, you know, our homes. My own house is fine. I can, I, I'll be okay here by myself. Or maybe we depend on the town around us, our communities, or the police. We depend on our schools to teach our kids. We depend on doctors and nurses and hospitals. All of those things, which are not all bad, but we depend on all of those things more than we depend on God. And so the message that God sends Isaiah with is that all of those things we depend on will be destroyed. They'll all be destroyed so that we as a people will depend on God. And God gives Isaiah this job, this call to go out with this message. A message that really is meant to be misunderstood Because even when we tear one another down, God is committed to staying with us. Even when we destroy our communities and our cities, God is still committed to staying with us.
even when we drive others away and we refuse their help, is still committed to staying with us. And like Isaiah, when God sends us out with the message that others will not accept or understand, God is committed to staying with us. So when this is the kind of message that we have, when we are going out to say that is not right, there is injustice in the world, so we have to change everything. Everything has to stay, has to change. Everything has to change. In order to do that, in order to bring that message to the world, we must stay close to God. We must root ourselves in God. And how do we do that? It's not very complicated, but it does take some commitment. We have to spend time in prayer. We have to meditate on who God is. And spend time studying the Bible and spend time in discussion with the community that we are in. Because when we do this, then we stay close to God and we realize again and again that our power, our ability to bring this message to the world, it comes not from ourselves, That power comes from God. The love that we share, it comes from God. And the energy to keep going comes from God. Because God will accomplish justice and peace. And God's vision for the world will become reality. It will happen. And like Isaiah, we are invited to go and share that vision. but we are only messengers. And the success of God's ways depends on God. Not on us. And this vision that Isaiah has, that helps us remember the power, the majesty of God. Now, if we turn away from what God is calling us to do, God will still work in us and through us. 
God will still be known in the world. Do you remember Jonah's story from last week? Jonah went in the opposite direction of where God asked Jonah to go. And, and people were still drawn to God through Jonah's life. So God will work through us even when we turn away. It just might be that everything is harder for us. Again, if you think of Jonah, right, after he runs away from where God is calling him to, right, he's swallowed up by a whale. And later he's, the whale like spits him up onto the beach, right? So one of my colleagues said, yeah, like, well, God will still work through us. We just might be covered in, in whale throw up, right? Right? So even when we turn away, God will still be known in the world. But life for us might be less comfortable. Everything might be a little harder for us. Now, I want to add that just because life is hard doesn't mean that we are intentionally turning away from God. Because if you look at Isaiah, I imagine his life is maybe not so great. And he says, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, send me, send me. But the message that Isaiah brings is that everything we know we have to surrender. We have to give those things up. All of those things that we depend on will, in fact, be destroyed. And even now in the world, really, like, we people much prefer, we really would rather do things our own way, not God's way, our own way. And so when we bring this message, when we are representing God and God's ways, life can be pretty hard. And here at Bread of Life, we are called to keep reminding the world God has an amazing love for deaf people. We are called to keep sharing that message far and wide. I would say it's not an easy call. It's not easy to do this because our message often points out that there is injustice. That things, there are barriers, there are like systems that actively keep deaf people out of the community. So our message that God loves deaf people, that deaf people are part of the whole community of God, that message points out that like everything has to change. Everything has to change. 
so for us to keep uh, bringing this message to the world again and again, we, we must stay close to God. We must be rooted in prayer. Meditating on who God is. Spending time together in Bible study, in discussion, we must reach out to God for power, for love, and for the energy to keep going. And how do we do that? Again, I'll just say those things again because often we forget. We reach out to God in prayer by meditating on who God is and by studying God's word. God will accomplish justice and peace in our world. And we are not God. Not one of us is God. So we must draw close to God. Because we are invited to go and share the vision and the message of that God has for the world, we're invited to go and share that the success for justice and peace for God's ways in the world, it, that success does not depend on you and me. It depends on God. In today's Bible lesson, God calls Isaiah to a crazy hard call. And Isaiah says, yes, send me. And similarly, God calls us here at Bread of Life to a kind of crazy hard call. And so the question before us, what do you say when God calls you into that work? What do you say?
prayer for others. Take three deep breaths. God, you breathe life into us. And with every breath, we thank you. Breathing in, <clears throat> we are grateful that you care for us. Breathing out, we commit to joining you in caring for creation. You created the world with relationships and now relationships are fractured. We come to you seeking your healing. For the places and people torn apart by violence. For the bodies and minds that are suffering. For the earth groaning under our weight. We come to you seeking your justice. For those whose voices have been silenced. For those whose lives have been stolen. For those whose worth is debated. We come to you seeking your peace. For those who live daily under the pressure of expectations. For those whose lives are marked by hatred and division. For those who are feel they are barely hanging on. We come to you seeking your abundance. For those whose bodies need nourishment they cannot provide. For those who struggle each day for crumbs. For those who believe they are flawed, unlovable, and not enough. We come to you seeking help for all who cannot breathe. For those who feel the stress and burden of racism. For those fighting disease. For those worrying about air quality. God, allow your breath of life to flow through our world, bringing fullness, hope, and joy. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, we invite you to share the peace of God with others. You might need to send a text message. You might need to write a card or call someone, send an email. Coronavirus has changed our lives a whole lot. And so we have to take a little more time to make sure that we let others know we have peace with God. And recently we've kind of gotten out of the habit of exchanging the peace 
here. So so good to do that. And it is so good that God gives us one another. God is so generous. And we really can't imagine how generous and full of love God is. But we do know that because God is generous and because God loves us, we can be generous too. We don't feel afraid that there won't be enough. There is enough, more than enough. And here at Bread of Life, we celebrate that God has so much love, love that goes into places we can't imagine, and love that is shown in ways that we can't imagine. And in particular, here at Bread of Life, we celebrate that God shows love to all of us, including people who are deaf, or maybe I should say, including people who are hearing, because here at Bread of Life, our message is that God loves deaf people and their families and hearing people too. <laughs> and here at Bread of Life, we, we love deaf people and their families too. And that means here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people and hearing people too. And every week we ask you to consider how God is calling you to join in that work. And one of the ways that we ask you to consider joining in that work is to send some of your money to Bread of Life. Because it's not free to do this work, to make worship available online, to provide Bible studies and discussion groups and all those different things that we're still doing, taking care of our building. We're still doing all of that work and that's not free. So we need some money. And so every week we ask you to consider sending some money to send a check to Bread of Life or to use PayPal and make a donation to Bread of Life. In the offerings that we bring to God, let us pray. God, you are creator. You have given us this place where we can succeed when we work side by side with you. You call us into relationship with all things. As you have provided for us, you have asked us to join in your work. As a sign of our gratitude, we bring you our offering, the fruit of our labor. When we give as you give, we are participating in your blessing of the world. Amen. I will get the bread and the cup for our communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, <clears throat> almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You pour out the fire of your Holy Spirit and fulfill the promises of resurrection. You unite us in one body of people using every language from every place in the world. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and the sea and all their creatures, who witness the resurrection. With the angels and archangels, the cherubim and seraphim, who witness the resurrection, we give thanks and together we praise your name and join in their unending invite you to join along signing the holy holy On Jesus' last night, when he gathered to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, thanked God, blessed it, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join together signing the Lord's Prayer. This will not be voiced. All are welcome and invited to this table. For this table belongs to God. And we are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feast. When you serve one another in your homes with the bread, please use the language body of Christ given for you. And with the wine or the juice, Please use the language blood of Christ shed for you.
If you're by yourself, I will serve you now. Body of Christ, given for you. Blood of Christ, shed for you. slumbers you who made the earth and heavens I lift my eyes up to the mountains you're my help and hope to come cheer me on my race is run be my keeper as I'm moving for I am close to some place deeper As you've held this world forever Be my keeper, be my keeper O oh, source of life, my soul is longing Catch me now, for I am falling Oh, be my shame in sunshine burning Be my comfort in the night I've been out I'm coming in Be my keeper as I'm moving For I am close to some place deeper As you've held this world forever Sustained me from before my birth and always You've been with me for all my journeys Help and hope, O oh source of life Heart of love, this is my time Be my keeper as I'm moving for I am close to some place deeper As you've held this world forever Be my keeper, be my keeper the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, this day and always. <clears throat> Just as we are amazed and rejoice that God gathers us together for worship, we are amazed and we rejoice that God sends us out. 
We're not scattered around in the world. God sends us. God sends us with power and love and energy that comes from God to share the message that God has a vision for the world different than what the world will do. We join in that work. And really, our ascending is the heart of the message that God has for us. So as you go, receive this blessing. God knows us fully, and God loves us fully. God is always near, always near. And just as you are, God loves you. Even when we make mistakes, God loves us. Yesterday, today, and forever, God loves you. And we say together, thanks be to God. Amen.